Welcome to Inventing Our Future on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Brittany Zimmerman. And I'm your co-host, Richard Hart. And joining us today is our guest, Kawilani Almeida, who will help us do a deeper dive into our pay conversation. Welcome, Kawilani. Aloha. Aloha. So, Kawilani, the letter for today is K. Can you give us a brief introduction to what our K topic will be? The topic that I was asked to speak on is something that I invented that actually came to light in 2018. Um, I've been really, really involved in the Kanaka movement for many years. And um, I woke up one day and I said, I need to, I had this, this desire to bring out the people that I've worked with for a long, many years and um, actually take them into conversation. So I created the Zoom and I called it Kanaka Knowledge, the study of Kanaka. And why I call it the study of Kanaka is because um, I didn't feel that there was any platform for any of these uh, community, uh, community of advocates, I should say. Um, activists, they were called activists. They were called many things, but I wanted to make sure that they were given the opportunity to tell their journey. Mm -hmm. you know, and um, so I created Kanakanology Zoom and um, it took off. It was actually a weekly show and I had an assistant in Leah Gopher that helped me do the Zoom. And basically, it was just about a one-hour conversation with all of these individuals, um, sometimes couples, that um, started their journey way back in the 60s from Kaho'olawe, Waihone Waikane, the uh, Ibi Kupuna, you know, and from all different islands. And uh, my request at that time and has always been that you have one hour to voice your journey. What made you come from where you are today? What was that journey for you to be here today in this particular moment to say that I was involved in a Kanaka movement? How? For what reason? Where? It started, and just for one whole hour, the time was theirs. So for those of us who don't know what a kanaka is, can you give us a little bit of background on what that term means to you? Um, it could mean mankind. It could mean a man, a person. It could mean a uh, native of somewhere. Um, in fact, when you study some uh, linguistics, um, mm -hmm. kanak, the word kanak, kanaka, um, comes from the South Pacific. And so it's not limited to just, um, I, I believe there's connections going on in the Pacific. And um, pretty much it is as simple as that. I call myself a kanaka oivi because the word oivi personifies that my Ibi Kupuna belongs to this land. And I Beautiful. And and so uh, in an earlier um, discussion with Richard, he had told uh, some stories, right? And in his book, uh, he's talked about how a lot of really important information gets handed down verbally um, within families. And so one of the things uh, that I think is really important when you were originally telling me about Kanakanology is I felt like this was another avenue via which a lot of the information that I think traditionally would come down in that way has a has a, a modern way of getting dispersed, right? That, that may or may not have otherwise been disseminated. 
Um, is that is that close? <laughs> we're very close. We're we're an oral uh, oral lahui, you know, for people that um, I prefer to not call us Native Hawaiians. I prefer to call us Aboriginals. Um, it gives it a lot more than just a cen United States census. Um, what can I say? Meaning, because that's what we're registered under Native Hawaiian as a race. But mm -hmm. uh, Aboriginal kind of like to me puts us in a in a, in our space where we belong, which is Aloha Aina, our connection to our Aina, our Apuas, our God. Uh, has to come from that sort of grounding. Um, and if you notice, like I said, again, in the Pacific, you know, a lot of the um, for people from the Pacific and stuff, they carry that word Aboriginal for that reason, because then it's just, it feels like it's generational. It feels like it's, um, it's something that you, that is tangible. I feel it's more tangible. I mean, like our Akuas, you know, um, we can touch, we can eat, we can manipulate, we can uh, cooperate, we can coincide. I just feel like it's just, it's more than just what people describe their Akua as spirits, you know, spirits of the land. Um, to us, it's more than that. They are us, we are them. We are the land, the land is us. Kind of, um, you know, what the term Aboriginal means to me. And so, you know, in my, my, um, I mean, I'm really kind of like, um, I, I didn't think that at one day in my life, I'd be the interview, <laughs> you know, um, I was actually using my show as a way of allowing people to be, um, like I said, share their story, share their mo'olelo. And, um, it was with people that, um, made, uh, Feather lanes, uh, people that was uh, just a regular person, fisher person, fisherman down at the ocean. That that if you could ask him any question about where he came from, what his you know what his purpose was in life to do, and um, you know if he would be able to tell us in that way. Um, I've had people on the show that um, were senators. I interviewed Senator Keho Kalole. I mm -hmm. interviewed um, the last the last term, uh, last term of the mayor of Hawaii County. Um, I interviewed Mitch Roth, and uh, and they were both uh, two people were running, Ikaika Marzo and him, and they came on Kanaka Knowledge and shared the space. Um, it was not not ever to be an interview situation, so I just let them pretty much you know, go. Um, I did all though tell my, you know, ask of my assistant Leah to that the chat box was open. So if there was something that was pressing that the audience wanted to, you know, get, uh, you know, a message or something across or their feeling of some, some sort of issue, I uh, required it to be um, posed in a question so that both people, both candidates could, you know, uh, address it. Um, we had political uh, parties of the Republican the, and the uh, for governor. We had a Democrat a Democrat for governor um, come on the show and, and voice their whole journey. And uh, it came from, it was fun, kind of funny because the Republican uh, person was pa'ele or what we call, um, you know, dark skinned person. And um, he came from Mississippi and he told his story. And the question that was pressing on the uh, on the chat room was, you know, do you think that you just landed here not even like five or five years and you're going to run for the, the highest office in the whole state? And his thing was, well, you know, it's because of my mom. You know, my, my mama is the one that, you know, single parent, that journey started in his dialogue and, and it took off. And then we could see exactly why he did what he did in order to get to Hawaii. He was a coach at one of the high schools on Oahu 
it, it, it just, the story just built and built and built. And before we knew it, it was time to end the conversation. And he was like, just get it going. <laughs> yeah. Never. So, well, then we can hold it for another show, you know. And yeah. So, right too. Yeah. You know, and, and then, you know, we will. But it is um, for Hawaii. And I truly believe this. Um, a lot of the immigrants that came over to Hawaii learned the Hawaiian language. And the language to them was led back from the Hawaiians. It was, everything was shared. Everything was shared. When you go to luau's now and everything, it's, um, you know, our feast, right? It's, there's sushi, there's, you know, fried fish, there's um, lao laos, there's poi, there's rice, there's, you know, uh, beef stew. I mean, it's just a, a whole thing of sherry. And um, that's what I heard from the stories. It wasn't so much the plight of going on their journey and all of the obstacles that they got, you know, going through on their journey. It, it became more of a a sharing of you know how different people helped them get to where they were going yeah and and the lessons learned you know um was basically that um that they had to come back to their hawaiian self and the three rules that every you know child when we were growing up i should say i'm not sure if it's still the same way, but it was three rules in everybody's house. It was you hamau your leo, you ho'olohe with your ears, and you look to the source by which information is coming to you. And if you're doing too much talking, and you can't hear what that source is saying, and or in another way that we, we speak, actually or listen is by watching people's expression in hawaiian language we don't have too many words in the you know the old way i would say the old way only because there has been a a, a, a big leap of um expediting the usage of our language that was dying and given to the little ones the toddlers the babies yeah. Um, even when they're in their stomach. Um, in 1978, when I came to college at Hilo College, um, my dream was to see the first O'olelo Hawaii preschool in the state of Hawaii. Only O'olelo Hawaii in the preschool. I was already doing it in preschools on the island of Oahu. But when I came to, I came home to Hilo, um, my, where my grandmother is from, uh, was living actually. She, um, she was actually a Kumu Olelo as well in her community of Keokaha and then to Panaewa. And she was known as Kumu Hodoi. And what she taught me was that go back to college, go back to the college because I know the professor there is going to be teaching the Olelo a different way. That's what you need to learn. And it was actually through uh, linguistics. And I went to um, the classes and everything. At that time, we still had Auntie Edith Kanaka Olea live. And she gave us the uh, cultural aspect of the language as well as the culture itself. We had uh, classes back then called ethnobotany, ethnozoology, uh, ohana of uh, uh, ka'u. Uh, and every Friday's auntie Edith would have this kani kapila. And all the classes that was available was able to come and bring their uh, ukulele. So ethnobotany is about uh, flora and fauna. And so when we studied the plants and animals of Hawaii, for example, um, we studied the maia, the banana. And there wasn't just, an, uh, you know, uh, the kadaka oivi there. It was kepani, 
you know, Haole, uh, you know, Pukiki, you know, Pake, everybody was over there. And she, as he would say, okay, you know, we go, you know, bring me I bring your kanikapila instrument and then come. And then uh, I come from her hello, okay, Kuhi. That is auntie's name, Kekuli. And so the girls used to drop by and dance hula, you know. And so we would just, she would be on our ukulele and we'd be. And that room that she was in every Fridays was packed. Mm -hmm. Every class that she held, ethnobotany, ethnozoology, um, packed. Ohana classes, packed. And Everybody in that class, like I said, we had the, say we had banana as the fruit of the week. She, we would make desserts. We would make, um, yeah. uh, what is that? Uh, hoteles. We would make all, and we would come, they would come and they would show how they make these dishes. So again, it goes back into sharing. And if I can be proud of, um, um, how I was raised and how I grew up in relation to everybody in Hawaii that shares the same space with us is that we all grew up sharing. We all grew up sharing. There was, um, we have friends even till today that, you know, when someone had, needs help financially, whatever, we all come together, fundraise, um, do whatever we can to help you know, to help. So, um, I thought that by having kanakanology, it would, the advocates, the activists that learned about, you know, um, their activism through what action they were taking against, whether it was, uh, the bones, digging up bones, um, you know, on Maui, um, if they were like on Kaho Olabe and learning the stories from them about <clears throat> it was just sitting there in the group. It was now we, you know, like I said, I, I started like a 2018, 19, you know, and when I realized that those stories weren't, they were just being held in their families and stuff. Yeah. But there's a bigger, uh, there's a struggle. There's a movement and there's a struggle. The Hawaiians have always been in the struggle from Bebe time, before Bebe time. Always in the struggle, moving all over, struggling, struggling, struggling. The movement is able to bring forth an organized manner by which we can resolve some of the struggles that we, that we have. So... I think that was very important to be expressed to Kanakanology that there's a big difference between the word we're in the struggle and we're in the movement. The movement is a movement thing. The struggle is an everlasting turmoil of things occurring different times, different um, outside forces coming in and have big impact on that struggle. Um, but as we went through Kanakanology, people were willing to come on and talk about the struggle, but that they were presenting as part of the struggle, uh, the movement that they were involved in. And some of them came up with a lot of good ideas of how we could either, you know, gain momentum in po politics, um, internal, you know, Native Hawaiian, you know, way we're looking at things now. Very, very important aspect. You know, how how do I feel in, as a Hawaiian in 2018 and now it's 2024? And then then we take it even, even farther and say, you know, my kupuna. You know, when you bring those stories into the mix, there's an everlasting kind of movement inside that in itself. And that's the kind of stuff I was trying to reach back in and try to find out through the younger generation you know sometimes when we talk it's so funny because we sing things like what our family our mother and father said like 
oh my gosh, you know this music? <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, you know, that's not the Hawaiian way for say that, you know, or, um, you know, this is not what we think it means, you know, and those kinds of stuff. And then it's like, well, then tell me about it. Tell me about what it means to you on the island of Monoka'i, on the island of Maui, Lanai, you know, um, your experiences in Koho Olape, what, you know, where you go to that aina and people on the outside who've never been there go, you know, no more nothing on that island. And when you go there, there's everything. Yeah. You know, we don't have trucks. We don't have car transportation. Maybe probably they have it now, but way back then, you know, the 70s, like that, it was like, no, they had it there, but you couldn't use it. You know? <laughs> but anyway, but it's just a different way to look at the whole genealogy and growth of all of the movement that has occurred. Um, we've had many of our um, or, you know, people like Hamani K. Tras, who was very instrumental in a lot of the um, activists. I, and I want to say activists because they are. They're active. Even though that they're quiet, they're still active. They're still participating in that movement into making things better for the Kanaka. Um, so that's where I was and am with the Nakanology. And um, I'm just, in fact, when, when we were talking about it one day, Brittany, I just totally had to just sit down and just think to myself, it's about time that I resurrected. it. Yeah. It's you know, Richard, Richard always says like his job now is just sit there, smile and look wise, which I think might be the approach he's taking right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd love I'd love Richard um to chime in on this because I feel like there's a lot of similarities and synergies between a lot of the stuff that you're saying, Karilani, and some of the stuff I've I've heard Richard say as well. Yeah. You know, from 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 my perspective, the older I get, the more I see how I've reacted to various different things. And I see how I reacted to what was passed out to generations. You know, it just came down from my uh, my dad. And when you're 10 years old, you know, you, you absorb a lot of things and you really don't have to go to school. If, 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 if it sits with you and, 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 you know, you, you, you can understand what the whole big picture means, you know, like for something really sim simple, you know, like, uh, no turn you back on the ocean. You know, when you think about that, that's really, 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 really impactful. Do not turn your back on the ocean because you, you're you going to get killed if you don't watch out. It's real simple. My pop would say something like, uh, wait, what are coming? What you going to do? And they were fishing, you know, with a bamboo pole and stuff like that with several friends. And I, I, I didn't know. He said, I climbed up the pole overhand, lifted up my feet. The wave went underneath. Then I, you know, I, when I dropped back down, I took the t uh, bamboo pole and I fished my friends out of the water. Then he turned around and he looked at me and he said, you know, I knew what I was going to do before it happened. You know, just, just that story lasts you the know, life. He tells you to plan in advance and all kinds of implications. So I listened to uh, Kawi explaining stuff and it makes all the sense in the world to me. Yeah, so Kali, how do we resurrect Kanaka knowledge so that we can get, you know, the sorts of stories that were passed down from Richard and his family and you and your family and all of these people that you've had, you know, with you before uh, who shared all of their wise and beautiful experiences and the many more that I think still need a, a place and a voice to be able to, to share if they would like. Um, while I was thinking about it, I got together with Leah, Leah Goker to, um, you know, what, what do you think, Leah? And she was like, yep, I think it's about time we bring it back. Um, nice. but to say that, you know, I took a hiatus because I wasn't well 
And the more that I've been getting more and more better in myself and my my health and stuff, I started to get, attach myself again to people <laughs> like Brittany and you know, <laughs> and then a very um, beautiful journey so far. And um, what it made me realize was that I am here in 2024. What has happened from the time that, you know, even if it's four years yep. or five years past, you know, where is everybody? Catch up with everybody. But mostly, um, I want to take it into maybe another uh, perspective, which is um, bringing back, um, when I left, actually, I left, I think one of the last people that I had spoken to was, what was that your dream? To do what you eventually did. And majority of them actually said, no. Because it just was something that had just been placed upon them. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but I believe that our our children, my my mo'opuna, my grandchildren, my great grandchildren to come while I'm still alive. Um, I think that the struggle that I spoke about before has interrupted so many of our generations. It's actually the interruption has actually been to not encourage dreaming. Primer. Me. just knowing that that's part of to me life and yeah. when you take that aspect of it away people don't grow yeah. people don't people stop growing at the way that they should be growing um, yeah. we get caught up into a systems or systems in the struggle and then we get stagnant I went somewhere and there were a whole group of uh, high school kids because my grandson is a senior this year. Mm -hmm. And I just talked to him, what are you guys up to? What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? And pretty much, I told them, if you could, if you could design high school, what would it look like? Yeah, great question. Many of them did not, many of them said, they didn't say, let's keep to the status quo. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Nobody answered. I want it the same. Oh, no, I just want this to be the way it is. You know, <laughs> no, you know, these are our bright, uh, our bright minds that we're sending to college, right? Yeah. Or just before we're sending them off. But was interesting. They said that um, freshman year was really bad for them because they, were, they had so much boredom going on. So they joined groups you know, gangs or whatever they did, yeah. they, they shouldn't have done. And it, what does that tell me? They weren't really going to school. Right. So I said, so Dre, this, this, just, just throwing it out there. He said, yeah. he'd rather be in computer classes all day, all night, whatever, you know. Um, somebody said, oh, you know what? I would really like to lear have learned something like um, met, uh, sports medicine. Sports broad broadcasting because there was that they were athletes. Um, yeah. they were talking about um that that's like like a uh, trade school versus yeah to you know learning learning mathematics and all these things to different kinds of of professions rather than sitting in a class and and part of it was because it depended on the weather. We have such beautiful weather. <laughs> And the yeah. applications that should have been outside becoming a, a like a lifeguard or something, why weren't they being able to get put put over there to now starting to get jobs and stuff? Mm. Yeah, get go. Why why were they always being sent to to, to college or school or whatever after mm -hmm. after going through what ten years or whatever of school or what a twelve twelve years of school and maybe summer and all that stuff. Um, that's the kind of dialogue that, like I said, to me originated from 
did you dream this guy? What did you dream? What you're gonna do? You know, or did you guys ever think of what you're gonna do? And all of them said, no. <laughs> Just play and sit, no. And I was like, so what are what are you doing to get ready to for the rest of your life? Because you know, once you make eighteen, um, anything you sign is legal. You know, you you don't have your parents back. <laughs> you know, all, they do. They they're looking at me like, how? You know, and. Mm -hmm. It's a awakening for me. It was. And so I thought to myself, you know, I might try to do Kanakanology, but yeah, on the maybe the uh, earlier ages. Like, oh, yeah, I think I think that'd be super important. And uh, Richard and I are both part of the Rotary Club and uh, they put me in charge of the Rotary Youth Leadership Award this year, which means I get to take some really, really smart kids. Uh, up to the Mauna actually in about two weeks. Um, and it, it's really focused around just that, Kami. It's really, all right, what do you want to do with your life? What tools do you need to achieve them? And let's put the things in place to make that doable, right? So I'll have to, I'll have to tell you what we're doing out there. I think you would like it a lot. So, all right, we're going to get a revival of Tanakanology. We are all looking forward to it. We're super excited. So we're going to tag back in in a bit, make sure that you have everything that you need uh, to bring that back to life. So uh, with that, uh, Richard, did you have any last minute thoughts before we wrap up? No, I, I, I really enjoy uh, listening to what you have to say. You know, it's uh, inspiring. And I think very applicable, you know, especially when you're looking at young kids. Young kids pick up stuff earlier than most people realize. I, I wouldn't have known. Other than it happened to me when I was 10 years old and it lasted my whole life. You know, so now I look back and say, oh man, I lied. That, that's, we got to start there and earlier you. Let's do it. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. Uh, this is Inventing Our Future at Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you again so much, Karilani, for joining us. And thank you to you, all of our viewers, for watching. If you want to get our email advisories to see a complete listing of all the shows, you can sign up for them on thinktechwaii.com. Well, we will be back in two weeks, so please tune in to do a deep dive into our L invention. Until then, I'm Brittany Zimmerman. And I'm Richard R. <laughs>